Ambitious aspirations indeed. 2025 is shaping up to be a big year, with the rate of Starship launches expected to skyrocket, as confirmed by Elon Musk and Kathy Luters. Are you ready? Meanwhile, NASA is making some exciting plans, including an extension of the ISS resupply contract and the launch of a new telescope. Let's start the week by diving into today's NR Studio update. We're heading into Flight 6, a mission that marks a major step towards SpaceX's ambitious future. SpaceX originally proposed 25 Starship launches per year from Starbase, but delays from the FAA and environmental agencies temporarily stalled these plans. However, with the success of Flight 5 and potential regulatory reforms coming, SpaceX is ready to revive these plans. As SpaceX's Starbase general manager, Kathy Luters mentioned that Elon Musk's ambition is to conduct 25 Starship launches per year, which would mean one launch every two weeks by the end of next year. This ambitious pace will set the stage for an even bolder goal of increasing the number of launches to 100 per year. In line with the current Falcon 9 launch rate, Musk himself confirmed the goal via Twitter, stating that we will be much faster than that indicating the company's intention to exceed expectations in launch frequency. Achieving 25 or more launches per year is critical for SpaceX to meet its long-term goals. Frequency is crucial in preparation for NASA's Artemis III mission in 2026, which will see Starship take astronauts to the moon. Beyond the moon, Starship's development is key to SpaceX's Mars colonization mission with a high launch frequency ensuring that Starship will be ready for this monumental endeavor. In addition to mission goals, SpaceX plans to achieve ship capture, a major milestone expected in April 2024. After that, it will move on to building the refueling system, which NASA hopes to have operational by March of 2026. The system will facilitate critical Starship tanker flights for missions to the Moon and Mars. Additionally, achieving 25 launches per year at Starbase will pave the way for SpaceX's expansion into Florida, where the company plans to support NASA's Artemis program with an additional 44 launches per year. This expansion, combined with Starbase's high launch frequency, will solidify SpaceX's position as a leading force in space exploration. In short, achieving 25 launches per year is a significant milestone for SpaceX, not only for operational readiness, but also for the broader goals of lunar and Mars exploration. If successful, SpaceX will revolutionize space travel and exploration, laying the groundwork for rapid, reliable missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. However, we all know that this is just the beginning. Musk has persistently underscored that achieving a frequency of 25 launches or one every two weeks is not the paramount objective. NASA has stated that SpaceX must first achieve one launch per week supported by two towers before it can begin operations in Florida. Targeting one launch per week would lead to more than 50 launches a year. From there, the goal is to double that number to 100, Kathy Luter said, eventually ramping up to multiple launches per day and eventually thousands of launches annually. This plan is critical for SpaceX's vision of sending a million tons of cargo to Mars and establishing a city of one million people on the red planet. Reaching 25 launches per year next year is a critical first step toward that larger goal. In terms of frequency, that's a six-fold increase over this year, assuming Flight 6 is the last in 2024. The leap is a significant milestone for SpaceX, especially given the skepticism surrounding the 2024 Starship delay due to regulatory hurdles and tactical challenges. However, SpaceX has shown relentless persistence in pursuing progress. To support this rapid acceleration, SpaceX continues to improve its systems, Star Factory, the company's manufacturing facility, is now operating at full capacity and demonstrating exceptional efficiency. The Starship stacking process, which used to take months, has now been accelerated to less than 1.5 months. By next year, SpaceX aims to be producing one Starship per week, and in the next few years, that pace could be increased to one Starship per day, further increasing production. SpaceX has made significant investments in its testing infrastructure. After acquiring the Massey Firing Range, the company upgraded the test facility by adding a new fire trench system. This infrastructure is critical to accelerating the testing of ships and super heavyweights, which are already progressing at an unprecedented pace with the potential for even faster progress. As for the launch site, 
SpaceX successfully completed the stacking of Tower B in just 41 days and is now developing a new OLM design. The addition of two towers will significantly speed up the launch and recovery process, with more towers expected to appear at Starbase in the next few years to further increase the speed and volume of operations. As Kathy Luters noted, we are fast approaching 2025, the year SpaceX's big dreams will begin to come to fruition with Starship. The pace of innovation and launches will continue to accelerate in line with the vision laid out by Elon Musk. If you're excited about this future, reply with Big Dream in the comments, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on SpaceX's exciting journey. Next, let's discuss NASA's latest update on its ISS cargo supply contract extension. NASA has decided to extend its cargo contract with the International Space Station through 2030, in line with the station's planned retirement. The decision was first explained by the agency in March 2023. According to a November 8 procurement document, the extension will cover the period from late 2026 to late 2030, with Northrop Grumman, Sierra Space, and SpaceX continuing to provide cargo delivery services. This means the vehicles used will remain Cygnus, Dream Chaser, and Dragon. These three companies were originally awarded CRS-2 contracts in 2016. In explaining the decision to extend the contracts, NASA stated that there are currently no other CRS-2 certified visitor vehicles on the market that can provide cargo resupply to the ISS. Extending the existing contracts is the most efficient method to ensure that these services continue to be provided during the ISS extension period. Before making this decision, NASA reportedly considered several other companies for inclusion, including Reverend, Reverend GV.X, a European exploration company, and UK-based GEPA Logistics. However, none of these companies appear to meet NASA's specific requirements for the mission. The total value of the CRS-2 contract is capped at $14 billion. NASA has guaranteed that the extension will remain within the confines of this budget. Data from federal databases indicate that, to date, NASA has allocated $2.7 billion to Northrop Grumman, $1.4 billion to Sierra Space, and $2.8 billion to SpaceX, culminating in a total investment of $6.9 billion U.S. dollars. The choice of these three companies makes sense, given their proven track records in providing supplies to the ISS. SpaceX's Dragon and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus have long been in operation. With Dragon's latest endeavor marked as CRS-31, Dragon is the only U.S. vehicle currently carrying NASA astronauts to the ISS. As for Dream Chaser, although it has not yet launched, it has shown strong potential for future missions. It also represents a significant setback for its other vehicle, Starliner. After facing a series of problems after its crewed test flight, the project is still under review and its future schedule remains unclear. The delays have caused significant losses for Boeing, which has proposed launching cargo missions in an effort to offset costs. But that opportunity may be slipping away. It's clear that no one wants to risk using a vehicle with so much uncertainty for a resupply mission, especially considering that these missions are critical to the continued operation of the ISS. Could this be the end of Starliner? Let us know in the comments below. Now let's turn our attention to an exciting update from NASA regarding a new telescope. At NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, engineers recently completed the integration of a key component into the Roman Space Telescope, the Roman Coronagraph Instrument. This technology is capable of blocking out starlight, allowing the telescope to detect the faint light emitted by planets outside our solar system. The Roman Space Telescope is currently scheduled to launch in May 2027. With a field of view at least 100 times wider than the Hubble Space Telescope, the instrument will focus its attention on exploring mysteries related to dark energy, exoplanets, and infrared astrophysics. To achieve this goal, the telescope will utilize its core science instrument, the Wide Field Instrument, along with the Roman Coronagraph, which will serve as a technology demonstrator for future space missions. It will be the first telescope specifically designed to search for signs of life on exoplanets. Rob Zellum, Deputy Project Scientist for Communications at NASA Goddard, said that to achieve our goals, a technology demonstration with the Roman Coronagraph is needed. We will apply the lessons learned to the next generation of NASA flagship missions explicitly designed to search for Earth-like planets.
That's it for today's episode. See you next time.